back to the channel, folks, and thanks for being here. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share on your social media. Everybody needs to be here to have fun with us. Okay, today we're going to use a torque multiplier tool. A buddy of mine loaned it to me because I was too cheap to buy one. And now I'm going to buy one. These things are amazing. As you could see in my one video, I went ahead and tightened the flywheel with it. And that's amazing. I do have a torque wrench that goes up to 250 pounds if needed, but this torque multiplier, it just makes it so much easier. So let's go ahead. I got to torque the 36 millimeter nuts on the rear drums. So let's go ahead and check it out. It's going to be a short film, but I thought maybe some would find it interesting. So here it is right here. Uh, this part, obviously, I'll show you. We'll be doing it together. This bolts to the rear drum. Uh, and then this, course, goes to the castle nut. What I like about this is the torque sets are on there. So you go 25 pounds to reach 225, which would be the flywheel. And it says 270 for the rear wheel, which I thought it was supposed to be around 250, but we'll get it worked out. But you're only setting your torque wrench to these specs. So this is amazing. I like this tool. The deeper one is for the drums, and the more shorter one, this one here, is for the flywheel. So let's get on it. I'll show you how to use it. Before we get started here, this is what I woke up to today. Although it looks kind of cool, you know, it's that time of the year. And the pond is shut down for the year, although the waterfall waterfall's still rolling. But, yeah, it looks good, though. I kind of like seeing that once in a while. Okay, first get a 19 millimeter. Let's pop the lug nuts off. Make sure you set your parking brake, handbrake, and put it in gear. I spun this on already with my electric gun, but I know it didn't take it up to 250 foot-pounds. So let's go ahead and set it up. You're going to need two of your lug nuts to put it on. You don't gotta crank over crank these or nothing crazy. I'm just gonna snug them. Okay. Okay, so this is bolted in place. Now you wanna put this on to the nut. Now, you use the shorter side, not the longer one, and it lines right onto the teeth. I'm going to put it down a little further, okay? Now, I have a, what do I have here? 7 sixteenths goes on to here, okay? Now, I got my torque wrench set at, I can't see it, 30 foot-pounds. Let me see something a minute. Okay. And that will equal out what it's supposed to be. So let's give it a try. <coughs> well, maybe my gun put it on tighter than I thought. Okay, well, maybe the other side will be a little looser, and you'll see what I mean. Okay, now, the holes aren't lined up for the cotter pin, so I'm going to back it off a hair, since I already know it's cranked pretty tight. 
That Harbor Freight gun must uh, go a little tighter than I thought it does. Almost there. Let me get my bar a minute. Just got to move it a little wee bit. A hair more. This thing's amazing. Saves a lot of grief. And we're lined up. As you can see, the holes are lined up for the cotter pit. So we'll go ahead and do the other side and I'll show you. I didn't know my electric gun. I bought it at Harbor Freight. It said capable of 250 foot-pounds. I really didn't believe them, but I guess it was. So let's go ahead and put the cotter pin in and we'll go ahead and go to the other side. Remove the wheel. Now, I already hit this too with my electric gun, so I don't know if it's already tight enough or not. We'll find out in a second, so. Honestly, I didn't believe that Harbor Freight gun would crank it that tight. But it did. So I guess not all their tools can be that bad. What happened? Okay, torque wrench is set at 30. Let's see. Nope. Okay, well, <laughs> I guess my gun did good. So you see how it works and what to set it at by looking at that. Well, hopefully you can see that. This thing is a must, and when you're doing the flywheel like I showed in a previous video, it just saves such a hassle. And if you have to get one loose, obviously, we got one of them stubborn ones. Put this on here. Come on. And you put your breaker bar on here with a 7 16 socket, and you will get it loose. Always remember, when you're trying to loosen one that's been on there a while, Take a wire, a wire brush, clean up the best you can around here, especially these threads hanging out. Spray some PB Blast on it and let it soak maybe even for an hour. Hit it again, let it soak for about an hour, and then try to break it loose with your torque multiplier and a breaker bar, and chances are it's going to come right off. Okay, that's it. Okay, so that was the DIY on a torque multiplier tool. Remember, they can be used for the gland nut on your flywheel, the 36 millimeter, and it can also be used for your nuts holding the drums on. Remember, there's two different torque specs between the flywheel and the drum, so look them up in your Bentley or Google as your best friend with stuff like that. Just make sure you get the proper information. Uh, these things are like a lifesaver. Uh, especially when you can't get them off and they've been on there a while, you can't live without the torque multiplier. And no, I don't own rights to the tool or anything like that. I should have had one long ago, but now I'm going to buy one after seeing how nice it was. Instead of struggling with a breaker bar and a long pipe all those years. So thanks for being here. Don't forget to subscribe and share the channel. Get it out there so more people can benefit by these videos. Thanks for being here.